skin cancer. No one wants to talk about it, not even us. But as triathletes, it's an important topic. So today we're getting our skin checked and we're gonna learn how to protect it properly. And you should watch this, it's important. Triathlon is a summer sport. The races happen outdoors and most of the training does too. That's one of the big appeals of the sport. But there can be too much of a good thing, too much sun specifically. Yeah, we all know that sun damages our skin and can increase the risk of certain types of cancer, but the sun is also good for us. It gives us a boost of vitamin D, it can enhance our mood. So actually too little sun can also be bad for us. As triathletes, we're generally on the far end of that spectrum, the getting too much sun end of the spectrum, far too much, in fact. Now we're not saying you should not do triathlon and we're not even saying you should avoid the sun. However, if you're a triathlete, which you probably are if you're watching this, you should pay special attention to looking after your skin. Yeah, so today we've come to one of the mold clinic branches in the UK, and specifically we're in London, and not only to speak to an expert and get their advice, but also to go under the spotlight ourselves and have a little check over our own bodies. This is Laura Harker. She's the lead nurse here at the Mole Clinic. She's a registered nurse specializing in skin cancer screening. And today, she's going to be checking our skin and telling us how we can do a better job of looking after it. I have to admit, I'm actually pretty nervous too. I'm not that I've been careless with my skin. I've just not been particularly careful. And I'm 40 years old and I've never been checked. This um, is my first check too, and I'm probably the same. I uh, definitely... Well, not applied sunscreen as much as I should have, anywhere near as much as I should. So um, try not to bite my fingernails <laughs> while we wait in the Just office. Just looking at all these images, and I'm like, oh, is this the... now a skin check is the first step in trying to prevent skin cancer, and this should be performed by a professional and ideally on a regular basis. And this is true for anyone, but particularly for triathletes, as sun exposure does increase your risk. And in fact, on average, your risk for melanoma can double if you've experienced sunburn more than five times. And a blistering sunburn, even just once during your childhood or adolescence, can more than double that risk for melanoma later in your life. And this is why I'm a little nervous. And also high time, I actually started getting checks regularly and got my first checkup. You see, I grew up in the 80s in South Africa. And I wasn't careless really, but I wasn't particularly careful. Generally, I would only put sunscreen on if I was worried about getting a really bad burn. If I was just gonna be in the sun for a little while, I wouldn't bother, my parents wouldn't bother. Basically, my, sun, my nose was peeling every day throughout the whole summer while I was in the sun. I, by the end of the summer, my hair was many shades lighter and my skin was many shades darker every summer. And then I became a pro triathlete. And I was a lot more careful then when I was an adult, but even so, there was occasions where I completely forgot to put sunscreen on before a long session on my neck or on my legs. And then I also race in places like Hawaii where even with liberal application of sunscreen, it was pretty much impossible to completely avoid a sunburn. So you can see why I'm a little bit nervous. All right then, James. So before we start the full body skin check, um, we're just going to run through a few questions, uh, just really focusing on the high risk groups um, when it comes to um, melanoma. So um, I can see that here on your form that you've put the neither your family or yourself have any personal history of, of melanoma. Mm. Um, you have had a lot of sunburns in the past and a lot of exposure as well, and especially when you were young as a yeah, child growing up. Definitely. Um, and how about sunbed usage? Have you used sunbeds at all I in the past? I haven't. I've never used a sunbed. Okay. Um, and then see here that you have got a, a few freckles from your sun exposure as yeah. well. Um, again, just indicating that there's been that, that past exposure, mm -hmm. um, really accumulative over time. So I'm going to have a look at all your moles, head to toe, um, undress down to your underwear. Um, I'll use something called the dermoscope, which okay. is magnification, um, just so and get a closer look at your moles um, to make sure that they're all looking nice and uniform and all looking the same. Okay. How often should someone be doing this? Like, this is obviously my first one in 40 years, but I'm assuming we're not going to do another one in 40 years' time. How often should I be doing this? Yeah, things? sure. So we'd recommend that you come and have a um, screening every year. Okay. Um, that's also coupled with having a check at home as well. So 
the whole point of melanoma is picking up on it early. Mm -hmm. So we recommend that you check your skin at home every three months. But it's sort of coupling with that professional check, especially when you're um, having a dermoscopic check, it just takes it to that, that next level. Okay. I guess uh, it's time for me to get undressed. Start on this side first. So, um, like I say, dermoscope is just magnification, just to get a closer look at okay. these. Now, you haven't noticed any um, non-healing spots or sores, nothing no. that's been bleeding or scabbing? No, no nothing okay. like that. So aside from your moles, that's something else to be aware of. Um, so there's something called basal cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinomas. So these are the non-melanoma skin cancers. Right. So these are the two most common. So this is sort of, you see here in the pictures that these look like little lumps, mm -hmm. as I say, spots or sores, something pink on the skin. Okay. Um, but the key is with these is that they won't heal, they'll get bigger over time, they might bleed, scab. These are linked with people who have chronic exposure over time, um, so whether you know people who might work outdoors. Um, but considering that they're the two most common types. Yeah. They're sort of the types of people don't tend to think of or, yeah. or look out for. Um, and commonly these are seen on the um, UV exposed areas. So okay. ears, face, backs of the hands. So if you just close your eyes for me, just have a look here. And do you get your eyes checked at the opticians? I do, yes, I wear contact lenses. So. Okay, good. One of the things that they will look for when they image inside the eye is ocular melanoma, okay. which is rare. Um, but obviously, as with any melanoma one that you want to pick up nice and early. As you can see here, there's nothing that really stands out. It all looks pretty similar. Um, yeah, I noticed you're going pretty rapidly. I mean, I, I clearly, it's fairly obvious if something is, yeah. is worrying. So you're looking for what's called the ugly duckling. Okay. Um, so the one that does stand out and look different. Okay. So size, shape, and color are the three most important things. You can also get a rare, form of melanoma that develops underneath the nail. So you'd be looking for sort of a um, band of pigment, which will always be from the base of the nail upwards, right. basically. So like for athletes, um, you know, you I can see your toenails there. Yeah, you don't know. look at my toenails. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes that can be, you know, it can look like very dark pigment. So yeah. obviously you'd want that to sort of grow out. Right, have you ever noticed that on my big toenails? Mm, but we know it's an occupational hazard. It's been like you know, that for about so. 15 years. <laughs> so the back is a high risk area for men, yeah. um, for melanoma. So the back for men and for women, it tends to be on the legs. Um, so I suppose it's sort of, you know, also that sun comes out, shirt comes off, not necessarily applying any, any sunscreen. It's yeah. also obviously a difficult area to apply the sunscreen. So what is a good idea, if you get someone to take a photograph oh, of right. your back, at least then you've got a reference point just to compare against, you know, so that can just sort of inform your three monthly checks. Right, if you rest one knee on the stool for me, I want to have a look at the soles of your feet, okay? okay? So again, this is an area that people don't think to check. Not a lot of sun exposure down there. Exactly, but you know, it's remembering it's all about that accumulative exposure. It all looks good, I'm happy. I can feel the tension leaving my body. <laughs> but there is one thing that I want you to do. Okay. So as you were saying, you know, the soles of the feet, they're not a naturally exposed area. I suppose it depends on what type of sunbather you are, but you know, there is <laughs> under the underwear. So um, it just gets people thinking again to check okay. everywhere. So I'll pull the curtain, just have a look under the underwear, okay. check the groin area, the bottom. Let me know if there's anything there that we need to check. Okay. okay. All right. Sure. So, you can't okay. watch this bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll pull that across. Just let me know. All right. Okay. Clean bill of health, Ooh, I, that is a weight off my shoulders. Let's get Mark in here and hopefully he gets the same treatment and the same clean bill of health. Well, now it's my turn. I've got to say I'm also a little bit nervous. Um, whilst my parents were very good looking after me when I was a kid and applying that sunscreen for me as I got older, well, I am, I think I'm my own worst enemy in the fact that I actually tan quite easily. I don't burn necessarily that much. so. I fall into the trap of not applying sun cream and being a pro triathlete like James, out in the sun day in, day out, and I have burned a few times, which is a little bit worrying. So, I'm gonna find out what the damage is. 
So before we get started with the check mark, um, we're just going to run through a few questions just to identify if there are any um, high risk memberships um, and anything you need to be aware of in terms of for, you, for your future checks. So have you had many sunburns in the past? Not many. I've had very mild sort of redness, mm. but nothing I would call severe sunburn or blistering like okay. that. Okay, yeah, so I think that's that's the thing. A lot of people sort of think of sunburns as being the ones that are peeling, yeah. blistering. Yeah, so probably, um, I probably, I've had sunburn. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so any sort of, you know, redness, pinkness, yeah. tingling on the skin. You know, especially sunburn when you're young as well, as, as a child is significant. Um, but yeah, if you're getting sunburns on, a, on an annual occasion as well, for sure, that will really okay. increase your risk. Um, so when you go in the sun then, um, do you tend to tan quite easily or would you burn quite easily? I think easily? that's probably my issue is I tan quite mm. easily and tend to not burn so much so, and I hate sun cream, uh, so I, I just don't like the feeling of it so I don't put it on as yeah. often. I've actually, I've tried to change that more in the last few years, I'm definitely, yeah. I'm putting sun cream on all the time. But I, there were definitely many years during my professional career racing, like I just didn't bother. Mm, yeah, so sort of understanding your skin type um, mm. and how it reacts in the sun is really important. So for those who are um, skin type one, so very fair skin, um, typically red, blonde hair, blue eyes, mm. um, freckles will burn very, very quickly. Um, they're obviously of a much higher risk of developing a skin cancer. Skin cancer is not just restricted to fair skin. Um, anyone can develop skin cancer. Mm -hmm. What we'll do is we'll have a good look at all your moles, head to toe, mm -hmm. um, you'll strip down to your underwear. Um, and as we're going through the check, um, we'll go over a few things in terms of what to look for when you're checking at okay. home. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. And just tilt your head back and I'll just have a check under the chin, that's it. So what factor sun cream would you usually wear then when I, you go out? I mean, I used to, if I was applying it when I <laughs> was quite bad, I would literally go for sort of like 15, 20, mm. but now I'm more like 30 plus, yeah. 50 quite often. You know, a lot of people say, oh yeah, I'll wear factor 30 to 50, but it's sort of, right, how about your application of it? Yeah, are you yeah. reapplying it? Yeah, you yeah. know, um, are you using the correct amount of sun cream? Yeah. Um, are you also doing that in conjunction with, you know, sticking in the shade, using mm. clothing, hats, sunglasses, avoiding midday sun yeah, as well? Yeah. So, you know, it's just, it's just sort of about applying the sun cream because the thing is, is areas can get missed quite easily, yeah, you know? Definitely. Perfect. Good. Yeah. So there is a darker one just in the centre of your back. Okay. Um, and underneath the dermoscope, the pattern is quite different to it. So okay. um, I want to come back to that one at the All end. Right. And there was just a little one on your shoulder as well that I wanted to, to come back okay. to. Um, so for both of these, it would probably be worth just getting them double checked with, with the doctor. Um, so what that would mean is we would image it now dermoscopically send it to the doctor for assessment and a diagnosis yep. um, to see if a referral is needed. Okay, okay. all right. All right. So it's got these little globules which can indicate maybe it's a new mole or a mole okay. that might be might be changing. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not scary, it's what the point of the check is, you know, to um, to pick up on these thing, things yeah. early. But, you know, as we were saying, whilst it's important for you to do your visual checks, it's coming and having these checks as well to just take it to that, that next level, really. Brilliant. Okay. Okay. Okay, Laura, we've been through our tests and uh, let's just run through exactly what you were looking for and also what the treatment would be uh, if you did find something. I mean, are you just straighten and cutting them out or is there a process? So there is a bit of a process to it. So basically, as we touched on during the check, when you're looking, you're looking for any moles that just stand out and look different. So whether it be in size, shape, colour. You might have also heard of the A, B, C, D, E as mm -hmm. well. So this is, um, you know, when you go on Cancer Research UK, you look online, it sort of um, formulates the basis really of your check. So you've got A for asymmetry, 
be for border. Colour, so it could be two or more shades of colour. D for diameter, so sort of general rule is five or six mil or bigger than the end of a pencil. And then you've got your E for evolution, so a mould that is continuing to change. So if anything is picked up and a referral is recommended, um, that's typically to a dermatologist. Okay. Um, and then they will be the ones who will be able to sort of determine the route of treatment. So sometimes this can be through the use of topical creams, like chemotherapy creams, or obviously your excision and biopsies as well, um, sent to the, for pathology to get a definitive diagnosis. Okay, interesting. And then for our triathlete viewers, <laughs> What should they be doing to prevent it? I mean, obviously triathletes, we can't just say don't go out in the sun. Mm. They're going to go out in the sun. Um, and when you say apply sunscreen, they go, yeah, sure. But then they go out for five, six hours. When should they be reapplying? How long do they have to be out there to think about reapplying? And what factors should they be using? And is there some specific things in sun cream that they should be looking at versus other ones like you know, things that are waterproof, etc. Yeah, so obviously that's going to be the most important thing for you guys is using a sunscreen that is waterproof um, and that obviously it gives a high level of protection as well. Covering up with clothing is probably going to be one of the most effective things that you guys can do. So hat, sunglasses, we talked about ocular melanoma. Mm -hmm. For you guys being in the water as well, you've got the reflection off the water. And then also using your UPF clothing as well. So having a look at your tri suit, seeing what sort of level of protection you've got. Typically they'll be um, 30 to 50. Um, but using a high level protection, making sure that you've got the... UVB um, protection, which is your factor, so that would okay. be 30, 50, and also your UVA protection as well. So it's all in the application, so really liberal application, sort of 15, 20 minutes before you're due to go out, so that's really important. Um, carrying a um, UV protective lip balm as well, that can just go in, in your pocket, and reapplying, so every two hours but for you guys it's probably going to be more because you're sweating you're in the water so reapplying as soon as you get out of the water um, and topping up regularly really throughout the day okay excellent a lot of information to digest um, and a lot of i think maybe a bit of emotions to process as far as going through this process myself thank you so much laura for your time and uh, helping us out today it's been uh, enlightening uh, for us uh, we are yeah we're going to go and discuss what well, Mark's feelings. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it. Uh, and I think I'll be back here in a year for a checkup. Thank you. Well done. Yeah, test's done. And I have to say, there's a big weight off my shoulders. Uh, speak for yourself. Um, yeah. I'm still eagerly awaiting uh, the full results and the follow-up for bit mine. A bit of an anxious wait. But I think the big lesson in this video is that a skin check is not something you want to procrastinate. It's a bit like going to the dentist. Nobody wants to do it, but you don't want to put it off either because it only gets worse. And unlike going to the dentist, you won't get a toothache that forces you to go there sooner or later with your skin. It can just get worse and worse without you knowing at all. And the big thing that you take away from this is that in stage one, skin cancer detected in stage one has a 100% survival rate. And later on, not so much. So go get your skin checked. Yeah, well, big thank you to Laura and obviously the Mold Clinic for helping us to make this video today. Yeah. Um, obviously, big weight off your shoulders, big peace yeah. of mind. For me, I'm sure yours will be the too journey, in, a, in, a, in a few The journey's only just started. Oh. Um, but it does go to show how important it is to come in. I honestly thought there would be no issues with myself. I've got very few freckles or moles on me, but... Um, and it may still turn out that there are no issues with yourself. Exactly but it's far better to have them detected now at this stage than potentially have left it. I mean, how many, how many years would it have been before you actually went and got exactly. around to doing this? I mean, so, it's given me, well, it was definitely a kick up the backside to get in there and do that. And I imagine many of you out there um, are in the same boat. Yep. And even though I found nothing this time, I'll definitely be doing it again soon so that I don't get into the position where, where I haven't detected something for a very long time. Probably shouldn't leave you hanging there probably wondering what's going on with me well yeah they identified two moles that i need to have analyzed and checked and they have done that so one of the moles they've deemed to be okay not an issue um, although to keep an eye on of course and then the other one we are going for further analysis and checks on so i'll feed back the results of that in our gtn show so do stay tuned for that 
But again, they have felt it's probably not a big issue. They didn't uh, identify it as a serious threat or serious issue, but doing our due diligence there. But I've got to say, I really didn't expect any of this. So I'm very thankful to James for dragging me along, giving me that kick up the backside that I needed. Because as I said earlier on in this video, I've certainly considered this, but just haven't got around to sorting it. So if you're in the same boat as me, I would absolutely recommend you do give yourself a kick up the backside and get on down there. Well, thanks again to them for helping us out today. And thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumb up, give it a like, and make sure you subscribe.